This course is Introduction to Philippine Criminal Justice System. Hello there! I am Jamika Kim Alma Banglo and I will be your facilitator for this lesson. I hope everybody will learn something on this topic. Are you ready to learn? Let's start! We are on Module 1, Basic Concepts of Criminal Justice System. Lesson 2, History of Criminal Justice System. Throughout the history of criminal justice, evolving forms of punishment, added rights for offenders and victims, and policing reforms have reflected changing customs, political ideals, and economic conditions. In this lesson, the development of criminal justice system will be discussed in order to appreciate how the past events affected the present situation. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to appreciate the historical development of the criminal justice system. In all our lessons, I have some few reminders. First, you need to stay focused. Listen to the lesson and understand what is the lecture all about. The second reminder is, you need to have your pen, paper, and module ready. Because one of the most effective ways in order to grasp knowledge is to take down notes. I am not telling you to write it all down, but you need to focus on the main idea, as well as it will serve as an aid in reviewing your lessons. And the third reminder is, if you have any questions, you can post it in our group or in our educational platform. These are all the contents of the presentation. It has the lesson, learning objectives, the discussion, learning activity, learning assessment, and learning sources. If you are ready, then let's start. Just click the button to begin. Primates often have notions of fairness and sharing with violations, punished by exclusion or banishment from social groups. In human history, prior to agriculture, more nomadic cultures had systems of punishment for behavior or resistance. With the development of agriculture, which led to more closely populated cities and cultures and behavior to address fears of persons taking advantage of or causing harm to others, more formal systems of punishment for crimes develop independently around the world or based upon other cultures including those developed in the early Babylonian laws or the Hammurabi and the Hammurabi Code. The code have served as a model for establishing justice in other cultures and are believed to have influenced laws established by Hebrew scribes, including those in the Book of Exodus. Hammurabi's code is one of the most famous examples of the ancient precept of Lex Talionis, or Law of Retribution, a form of retaliatory justice commonly associated with the saying, an eye for an eye. Under this system, if a man broke the bone of one of his equals, his own bones would be broken in return. Capital crimes, meanwhile, were often met with their own unique and risky death penalties. Law enforcement in ancient China was carried out by prefects. The notion of a prefect in China has existed for thousands of years. The prefecture system developed in both the Chu and Jin kingdom of the spring and autumn period. In Jin, dozens of prefects were spread across the state, each having a limited authority and employment period. In ancient China, under the rule of Dang Lin Wang, a new judicial system emerged and this new system had prefects appointed by local magistrates, who in turn were appointed by the head of state, usually the emperor of the dynasty. The civil administration of their prefecture or jurisdiction and prefects usually reported to the local magistrate just as modern police report to judges. Some prefects were responsible for handling investigations 
much like modern police in decades. Eventually, the concept of the prefecture system would spread to other cultures such as Korea and Japan. Law enforcement in ancient China was also relatively progressive, allowing for female prefects. In ancient China, when minor judicial incidents such as robberies occur, the client reports to a police officer, which is also known as constable. To catch a thief, a constable can arrest another thief by baiting him with a forged opportunity and use the thief's same field knowledge to predict the one in question. The assisting thief would still be punished for robbery, but since he assisted the officer, of course, his punishment would be lowered. By Ming law, police officers have a strict time schedule to arrest the criminals. They usually have 30 days to arrest the issued criminals. If officers have not captured their assigned criminals after 30 days or assigned deadline, they would subject to physical punishments. Successfully arresting criminals earns police officers promotions. However, this method was often subject to abuse in order to quickly earn promotions. Police officers were appointed by the head officials from the populations. In prior modern Europe, for the most part, crime was viewed as a private matter in ancient Greece and in Rome. Even with offenses as serious as murder, justice was the prerogative of the victim's family and private war or vendetta, the means of protection against criminality. Publicly owned slaves were used by magistrates as police in ancient Greece. In Athens, a group of 300 city and slaves was used to guard public meetings to keep order and for crowd control, and also assisted with dealing with criminals, manhandling prisoners, and making arrests. Other duties associated with modern policing, such as investigating crimes, were left to their citizens themselves. The Roman Empire had a reasonably effective law enforcement system until the decline of the empire. Though there was never an actual police force in the city of Rome, when under the reign of Augustus, the capital had grown to almost 1 million inhabitants. He created 14 wards, which were protected by 7 squads of 1,000 men. If necessary, they might have called on the Praetorian Guard for assistance. Beginning in the 5th century, policing became a function of clan chiefs and heads of the state. During the Middle Ages, crime and punishment were dealt with through blood feuds or trial by ordeal within the parties. So just like in the picture, this is a trial by ordeal by flogging. Payment to the victim or their family, known as ordeal, was another common punishment, including for violent crimes. For those who could not afford to buy the way out of punishment, harsh penalties included various forms of corporal punishment which include mutilation weeping, branding, and flogging, as well as execution. We have also the vast Gota Lagen, I'm not sure with the pronunciation, just let me check. It says, Vast Lagen. Or, Vast Gota Lagen. Vast Gota Lagen. So I think that's the correct pronunciation. It specifies exactly how much to pay, if anything depending on who was slain. The primary form of state-administered punishment during the ancient times and the Middle Ages was banishment or exile. The prison list change existed as early as the 14th century in Florence. Incarceration was not widely used until the 19th century. Rather, it was used to detain prisoners before trial or for imprisoning people without judicial process. The Anglo-Saxon system of maintaining public order was a private system of tightings since the Norman conquest led by a constable which was based on social obligation for the good conduct of the others. More common was the local lords and nobles were responsible to maintain order in their lands and often appointed a constable, sometimes unpaid, to enforce the law. When early colonists first came to America, they did not include trained lawyers or other law-knowledgeable persons. Many parts of the criminal justice system in colonial America were similar to those in England, France, and the Dutch Republic. Gradually, French and Dutch influences disappeared in the islands. What remained was the basic English common law system. 
this system was the best known to 17th century colonists. The common law system included a set of rules that were used to solve problems in society. It was based on the history of decisions previous judges had made instead of lawmaking codes or laws. This system made a distinction between two basic types of crimes, felonies and misdemeanor. The legal process, mostly for more serious crimes, involved a grand jury composed of members of the community which decided whether there was enough evidence for prosecution. However, in these proceedings, no district authorities or public prosecutors were available. The victim of the crime was responsible for instigating the prosecution and financing it. It was these fundamental principles that stuck with the colonies and were used selectively to create a new and unique normal criminal justice system. Many factors influenced the colony selection process by which they constructed their justice. As previously mentioned, there were no professional legal experts and few law resources available. This left a lot of room for creativity and mistakes. The colonists were largely left to their own devices concerning the details of their developing criminal justice system. The new environment the colonists encountered in the New World, especially the Western Frontier, also affected the way the law was shaped. The system was molded to fit the colonists' needs as they settled further and further west. Vigilantism was inevitable by product of the faults of the development of justice in America. Religion, especially early on the colonial period, exerted a strong influence on lawmaking. Legal codes such as the 1648 Book of the General Laws and Liberties of the Massachusetts Bay Colony contain very strong biblical references, more so than did the ones of England. Although this religious impact was felt most strongly in Puritan colonies, similar ideas were evident among other colonies as well. Many colonial makeshift criminal codes considered lying, idleness, drunkenness, certain sexual offenses, and even bad behavior to be crimes. These moralistic crimes stem from the relation of crime to sin and sin to crime. Adding to the religious factor, the colonies held individual liberty in high regard. This later influenced more contemporary criminal codes. The first official criminal justice system was created by the British during the American Revolution as they created the system to primarily justify hangings to the citizens of their government. In each selected area or district, there was a magistrate that in today's time would be known as a judge. These individuals were in charge of determining if the Crown, or also known as the British government, had enough evidence to hang an individual for a crime. The British would not always hang an individual for committing a crime. There would also be trials for punishments that would be carried out by the cleaning ships, prison ships, or be locked up on the British mainland. During the American Revolution, the primary type of punishment was to be hanged or sent to prison ships such as the notorious HMS Jersey. After the American Revolution, the British-based criminal justice system was then adopted by other developing nations such as the United States. The collective experiences of people shaped their response to crime and disorder. To understand the nature of crime in the Philippines and its criminal justice system, one must be familiar with its history and its foregoing discussion describes the development of the Philippine criminal justice system through different stages in its history. Human settlements had existed in the archipelago well before the arrival of the first Spanish conquistador. Early settlers came from the south by Borneo and Indonesia and from the north from southern China and Taiwan. Most of them lived by or close to water and traded with the Chinese, the Cambodians, and the Champans. These pre-colonial societies were based on kinship and were stratified into three groups, the ruling elite, their peers, and the followers, and the slaves. Adato, whose authority rested primarily on his physical prowess, 
wisdom, inheritance, or wealth ruled the smallest political social unit known as barangay. Each barangay existed autonomously and a centralized government did not exist. Assisted by the elders of the barangay, the Datu legislated laws and acted as judge. All trials were held in public and litigants pleaded their own case. At times, the Datu would hold trial by ordeal to resolve doubts. People believed that the gods would protect the innocent and punish the guilty and that the result of the ordeals was a revelation of the divine truth. Murder, adultery, theft, and insulting a woman were considered great offenses and were punished by enslaving the offender. If the value stolen was great, the offender and his relatives were all fined. Failure to pay the fine resulted in the enslavement of all members of the family. Toward the end of the 14th century, Muslim missionaries reached the southern islands of Mindanao and converted the natives. This resulted in the creation of alliances that helped in thwarting the subsequent efforts to colonize southern Philippines. Islam would have spread northward were it not for the arrival of the European conquistadors beginning in the 16th century. On March 16, 1521, Ferdinand Magellan reached the central Visayan region of the archipelago. His discovery of the islands led to a series of Spanish expeditions that culminated in Miguel Lopez de Legazpi's conquest of Manila in 1565. Thus, began the 333 years of Spanish colonial rule that drastically changed in the islanders' way of life. The, under the guise of spreading Christianity and saving the natives from eternal damnation, the colonial government dissolved the barangay and forced everyone to live in pueblos. Newly Christianized Indios, the derogatory term used by the Spanish to refer to the natives, were placed under the watchful eyes of the clerics and were required to pray or to pay tribute to the new sovereign. As in all Spanish colonies, the new order extended Spanish laws to the Philippines and this included the Código Penal or the Penal Code. We have Ley de Enquisimiento or Enquisimiento. 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 Ley de Enquisimiento Criminal or the Code of Criminal Procedure, Código Civil or Civil Code. Lady de Inquisimiento Civil or Code of Civil Procedure and Código de Comercio or the Code of Commerce. A court system that consisted of superior and inferior courts was likewise established. The Guardia Civil or the Civil Courts performed law enforcement functions. Individuals who were convicted of serious offenses such as murder and treason or executed either by firing squad or garrote. The oppression and injustices suffered by the Filipinos at the hands of the friars and civil administrators caused massive unrest and sparked the quest for independence. The sporadic uprisings broke out and crescendoed to the 1896 Philippine Revolution. By the mid-1898, the revolutionary forces had gained control of most of the provinces. On June 12 of that year, the leader of the Revolutionary Forces, General Emilio Aguinaldo, declared independence from Spain. Their jubilation would be cut short, however, by the eruption of the Spanish-American War. The explosion of the USS Maine in Havana, Cuba precipitated the hostilities between Spain and the United States. Spain would lose the short leave war and, under the Treaty of Paris, seed the control of the Philippines in the United States. The newly established Philippines Republic under General Aguinaldo had been led to believe that the United States would not claim the colony for itself. He refused to recognize the treaty. A fierce and bloody war soon broke out between the Philippines and the United States. The war officially ended on July 4, 1902 with the United States as the victor. This ushered in the American colonial rule that was trumpeted as a noble endeavor to educate, uplift, and civilize the Filipinos. Like the Spanish, the Americans indoctrinated Filipinos on the superiority of their values and practices. Unlike the Spanish, they encouraged Filipinos to learn their language through a system of mass education. 
This approach changed the cultural landscape of the Philippines and impacted every aspect of life on the islands. The American colonial government enacted several laws to eradicate the vestigates of Spanish rule, including new codes of criminal and civil procedure. It established a new judicial system modeled after the judicial system of the United States. The United States President was given the power to appoint the justices of the Philippine Supreme Court. The United States Supreme Court was also given the power to review the decision of the Philippine Supreme Court in certain cases. In 1901, the colonial government formed a national police force and a year later, it, it extended the Bill of Rights of the United States Constitution to the archipelago. The use of foreign squad or garrote as a method of execution for capital offenses was replaced by the use of electric chair in 1926. In 1934, the Tidings of Duffy Act of the United States authorized the creation of the Commonwealth of the Philippines, a transitional administration that would prepare the islands for eventual independence. Pursuant to this law, the 1935 Philippine Constitution was drafted and ratified. The Japanese occupation of the Philippines during World War II would force the Commonwealth government to go into exile. On July 4, 1946, about 10 months after Japan's formal surrender, the Commonwealth government was dissolved and the Philippines became an independent republic. This officially ended the American colonial period. Despite its alliance with martial rule from 1972 to 1986, the Philippines remains a democratic and republican state with a unitary and presidential form of government. The current Philippine Constitution, which took effect on February 1987, distributes government powers among the executive, legislative, and judicial branches. The president, who is elected by a direct popular vote, and serves for six years heads the executive branch. He acts as the head of the state and the head of government and exercises control over all executive departments, bureaus, and offices. The legislative branch, on the other hand, consists of the Senate, which has 24 senators elected at large, and the House of Representatives, which has 289 representatives elected from legislative districts and through party list system. The two chambers exercise legislative power except to the extent reserved to the people by the provision on initiative and referendum. Judicial power is vested in the Supreme Court, which is made up of Chief Justice and 14 Associate Justices, and it's such lower courts as may be established by the law. This power includes the duty to settle actual controversies involving rights that are legally demandable and enforceable, and to determine whether or not there has been a grave abuse of discretion amounting to lack or excess of jurisdiction on the part of any branch or instrumentality of the government. The country consists of 17 administrative regions and each region is subdivided into provinces cities and municipalities, and barangays. These political subdivisions exercise local autonomy within their respective territorial jurisdictions. Philippine criminal law is largely based on the Spanish Penal Code. The classification of crimes and imposable penalties in the Revised Penal Code of the Philippines, Act No. 3815, mirrors the strong influence of civil law tradition. The code combines classical and positivist criminological philosophy, which results in the mixed goals of retribution, deterrence, rehabilitation, and reintegration. Under the Philippine law, there are three classifications of crimes, felony, offense, and misdemeanor. Felony refers to a violation of the revised penal code. Offense is a crime punishable under special law, and misdemeanor pertains to minor infractions such as violation of an ordinance. And that is the end of our discussion. Let's proceed to the learning activity. Your assignment will serve as your learning activity. Your assignment for this lesson is posted in your learning management system.
Your learning assessment is the quiz hosted in your learning management system. For the references used in the lesson, these are my sources. For the graphics or pictures used in this presentation, these are the internet sources.